Hello Internet. Welcome to my video series on real analysis. And instead of going into a long-winded discussion of what real analysis is, let's go ahead and jump into one of the central problems of real analysis. What are the real numbers? We denote the set of real numbers by this blackboard R, whiteboard in this case. Um, and you might find that the answer to this question is more subtle than you maybe originally thought. For something that's so familiar, we were introduced to this, most of us, in high school algebra. It's kind of mysterious, giving a concise, rarest definition of this set. Uh, maybe harder than you might think. Um, but the question I want to start with that will motivate this question is not a what question, but a why question. Why don't we just use the rational numbers? The rational numbers are a pretty good set. If R and S are rational numbers, we can add them. We can multiply rational numbers. Um, we can find negatives of rational numbers so that we can subtract. We can find reciprocals of rational numbers as long as they're not zero. And so we can divide. Um, algebraically, they're pretty nice. They can they allow us to solve any equation of this form as long as a is not equal to zero. And of course, a and b are rational numbers. So we can solve linear equations. Um, we can even solve systems of linear equations as long as they're consistent. So on the surface, rational numbers seem like a pretty decent number system to work in. But clearly they must have some inadequacies since we're introduced to the real numbers in high school algebra. So we're now going to discuss in this video the problems with the rational numbers. And specifically, we're going to focus on algebraic problems. So we're going to be focused on problems relating to the binary operations on the set Q and uh, solving equations on the set Q. So the prototypical problem with the rationals can be motivated geometrically. Because when we use geometry, we have a little bit more access to our intuition. That's always helpful, especially as you become more advanced in mathematics. So if we look at the unit square, yes, this is a square that is a right angle. This is the unit square, side lengths of one. We know that if this is the length L of that diagonal from basic geometry, we know that square the length of that diagonal must be two. Um, and the Greeks knew this, but the Greeks conceived of numbers essentially as the rational numbers. Uh, but people were having trouble coming up with a rational number L that satisfied this equation. And in fact, there's a very classic proof that no such rational L exists. And uh, I'll show this here. It's a pretty basic proof. Um, it's a classic proof by contradiction. So what we do is we assume that such a rational L exists. So we assume L is rational. If this were true, then we could write L as the quotient two integers. N, of course, must not be zero. And M and N are integers. Okay. 
Now, since L squared is 2, that means that M squared over N squared is 2, because L is M over N, so we just square it. We should get 2. Now, I forgot another assumption on M and N. We know that if we have a rational number, we can write it in reduced or simplified form. And this means that M and N have no common factors. So M and N are what we say relatively prime, which means there's no number that divides them both other than one, no positive integer that divides them both other than one. And we can do this for any rational number. We can simply divide out common factors from the two until we get an M and N that are relatively prime. This requires a little bit of number theory to prove rigor rigorously, but you know this from your own experience. So we won't worry about that. So M and N are relatively prime. Now, um, thanks to the algebraic magic of the rational numbers, we can write this equation as M squared equals 2 N squared. We can conclude from this that m squared is even because it's 2 times some integer. But we can also conclude then that m is even, right? Because if m were odd, say you take a common odd number like 3 or 5, its square would be odd, 9 or 25. So if the square is even, then m must be even. But if m is even, so m equals 2q for some q in rather the integers, then that means m squared is actually divisible by 4, because m squared equals 4q squared. So if m squared is divisible by 4, we can divide both sides of this equation by 4 and find that m squared over 4 equals n squared over 2. And these are still integers because m squared is divisible by 4, so m squared over 4 is an integer. So n squared over 2 is an integer. From this, we can conclude then that n squared is even, and by a similar argument, n is even. This is a problem because we assumed that m and n were relatively prime. This says that 2 divides m, that line just means divides, and 2 divides n. This is a contradiction. So one of our assumptions must have been off if we go back we see that we assumed that L was in Q. So that must be false. And hence, L is not in Q. So we've shown an algebraic weakness of Q, namely a fairly innocuous equation does not have a solution in the rationals. And this is a problem for doing algebra. In the next video, we'll look at this problem in a little bit more depth and investigate why the rationals might not be the best number system for calculus.